In this video, I want to explain brain retraining for chronic fatigue syndrome, what it is, how to do it correctly, and if it actually works. Okay, let's get right into it. What is brain retraining? It's a therapeutic approach to heal chronic fatigue syndrome and related conditions naturally. The goal is to rewire certain neural pathways and change thought patterns that trigger your fatigue. A great analogy is that you're working with your body's software. So you're trying to rewrite your brain's signaling and how it processes stressors, instead of trying to change the body's hardware through medication, for example. The whole approach builds heavily on the principle of neuroplasticity, which you need to understand to know how brain retraining works. The concept of neuroplasticity is relatively new in the history of neuroscience. For many years, it was widely believed that the brain's structure and function were largely fixed after a certain age, typically after early childhood. Doctors used to think that the brain and nerve cells could only form new connections during early development, and that neural pathways and cell communication became relatively fixed in adulthood. But in the latter half of the 20th century, more and more research began to challenge these views. Studies on animal models showed that the brain and nervous system could change in response to new experiences or environmental changes. After that, studies on humans confirmed these findings. For example, one famous study showed that London taxi drivers had larger posterior hippocampi compared to non-taxi drivers. So that part of the brain that is responsible for the spatial memory needed for navigation. Not only were their brains different from normal people's brains, but the taxi drivers with the most experience and best memory of the city's layout also had the largest posterior hippocampus. At the time, this was a pretty big deal because it laid the foundation for neuroplasticity. But the question is, how can we use this principle of neuroplasticity and brain retraining for chronic fatigue recovery? To understand that, I need to talk about your nervous system. Your autonomic nervous system is divided into several branches, the most famous of which are your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. Chronic fatigue patients usually suffer from an overactive sympathetic nervous system. I explain this in much more detail in a different video. This overactive sympathetic nervous system branch constantly triggers your fight or flight response, which also means your parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for your rest and digest reflex, is underactive. This nervous system imbalance is called sympathetic dominance and a huge driver in chronic fatigue syndrome. Another problem is that the more you activate your sympathetic nervous system, the more easily it gets triggered the next time. This creates a vicious cycle where smaller and smaller issues become stressors to us and keep us stuck in fight or flight. Breaking through this vicious cycle is key to recovery. Brain retraining is one way of doing this. When I discovered it years ago, it was referred to as amygdala retraining and I learned about it as part of the Gupta program one of the oldest retraining programs out there. Your amygdala is an almond-shaped set of neurons located deep in the brain's medial temporal lobe. It plays a key role in processing emotions, especially fear and stress. When the amygdala detects a stressor, it sends a signal to the hypothalamus, which in turn tells the sympathetic nervous system to take over. So the amygdala is upstream from the sympathetic nervous system. Basically, what brain retraining and amygdala retraining programs do is calm down your brain and nervous system's overactivity. That way, you can break through the cycle and finally activate your parasympathetic nervous system again. Every program out there has a different approach, but what basically all of them have in common is one, they teach you some sort of active relaxation. This can be meditation, progressive muscle relaxation, autogenic training, slow movements like Tai Chi or even yoga. Unlike passive relaxation, where you just do nothing, active relaxation means relaxing your body and mind while still engaging them. For example, progressive muscle relaxation has you tense up and relax all the major muscles throughout your body in a specific sequence. Or meditation has you focus on a specific image or experience in your head. Active relaxation is extremely important in our hectic modern lives, and I still do it every day. It's an amazing way to reduce overall stress. The second thing brain retraining programs have in common is that they teach you a way to break through negative thought patterns. Let me give you an example to explain how this works. 
Chronic fatigue patients are often scanning for new symptoms. They do this so much that they have trained their body to always be on high alert. After a while, much of it happens unconsciously, like a background program that is always on. If the body spots a new feeling or symptom, the brain and neurological pathways are primed to see this as dangerous, which in turn means more stress and a worsening of their symptoms. Brain retraining programs help you turn off the constant symptom scanning and exchange the negative thought patterns for more healthy, positive ones. One strategy would be to give you a mix of verbal and physical blockers that you do every time you catch yourself focusing on symptoms. So for instance, if you notice that your body is scanning for symptoms, you stand up and say, stop, then take a step back, turn 180 degrees, and take a step in the opposite direction to then say something like, I trust my body and feel relaxed. This is just a simplified example, of course, but the blockers are meant to readjust your thoughts and over time, it is basically a way of teaching your subconscious to not always go down the same negative neurological pathway that just reinforces your symptoms. If you're familiar with cognitive behavioral therapy, you can probably see the similarities between it and brain retraining. CBT is based on the idea that your thoughts and feelings are interconnected and how negative thoughts can keep you stuck in negative symptoms. So not only is there a lot of overlap between neuroplasticity and brain retraining, but also between CBT and brain retraining. The question of course is, does it all work? What can we say about the effectiveness of brain retraining and do I recommend it? There are really only a few studies that analyze specific brain retraining methods for chronic fatigue. For example, one study conducted by Luther College found that amygdala retraining did significantly reduce fatigue and increased energy levels when compared to a normal wellness program. There is a handful of similar studies that also show promising results, but I would say it's too soon to say that this approach is widely accepted among the scientific community. That said, when it comes to studies on chronic fatigue, I wouldn't obsess too much over them either. I explain why the CFS research is a mess that leads many patients to stress out even more in a different video. So here's what I recommend when it comes to brain retraining. First, you need to understand that relaxing an overactive nervous system is extremely important for your healing. So important, in fact, that it is priority number one in my own recovery program. Brain retraining and active relaxation techniques are great for that and basically have no side effects. But second, it is not the only thing you need to do, especially if you are a severe case. Nutrition and lifestyle measures also play a big role and are needed to get your energy back. In some cases, people don't tolerate the nutrition and lifestyle changes required for healing. They get side effects from certain foods or supplements and their nervous system reacts to anything new that they try out. For these people, brain retraining is even more important. But once they have calmed down their nervous system, they need to do the other things as well. So brain retraining is one strategy or one piece of the puzzle that will help you get better. But by itself, it's usually not enough, especially for severe cases. Again, I designed my own recovery program with that in mind. So it is step number one on your recovery journey. But afterwards, you need to get your nutrition and lifestyle right as well. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one.